In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have just sung, Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. John 8, 36, If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Messiah came. The Word was made flesh. Jesus was born to set us free. Now, the word free resonates with most of us. How proud we are to be free Americans. How glad we are to be free of uh, dictators and tyrants. But, what does it mean to be set free by Jesus? A man asked a woman, are you free Saturday night? Is that what we mean by free? A youth turns 21 and rejoices, now I'm free to drink. Is that what we mean by free? Does being set free mean we can do anything we want without restraint, without responsibility, without accountability to something or someone outside of ourselves? I don't think so. Does being set free mean we are free from worldly concerns and are able to see beyond ourselves from evening. Sherlock Holmes and Watson were camping. They'd gone to bed and were lying there looking up at the sky. Holmes said, Watson, look up. What do you see? He said, I see thousands of stars. Sherlock says, and what does that mean to you? Well, he says, I suppose it means that of all the planets and suns and moons in the universe, we are truly the one most blessed with the reason to deduce theorems to make our way in this world of criminal enterprises and blind greed. It means that we are truly small in the eyes of God, but struggle each day to be worthy of the senses and the spirit we have been blessed with. And he says, I suppose at the very least, in the meteorological sense, it means it is most likely that we will have another nice day tomorrow. What does it mean to you, Holmes? Sherlock says, to me, it means someone has stolen our tent. <laughs> <laughs> Holmes saw the absent tent, but Watson was free to see the majesty of God's creation. Does being set free mean we are free from duty, or frustration, persistence, or even failure? Also from email. And where did preachers get their material before email? I don't remember. <laughs> Good news and bad news for a pastor. Good news. The Staff Parish Relations Committee accepted your job description the way you wrote it. <laughs> Bad news. They were so inspired by it, they asked the district superintendent to find someone capable to fill that position. <laughs> Good news. You finally found a choir director who approaches things exactly the same way you do. Bad news. The choir mutiny. <laughs> Good news, Mrs. Jones is wild about your sermons. Bad news, Mrs. Jones is also wild about the gong show Beavis and Butthead and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Me. 
for continuing the series, Tell Them About Jesus. We look to Jesus to see what it means to be free. Jesus was possessed by a purpose. And he freely chose, freely chose to live and die fulfilling that purpose. He was free from anything that threatened to sway him from the course. He was free from the need for affirmation and approval. He was free from the restraints of public opinion. He was free from the pressure of his family to come to his senses and come home. He was free from the fear of ecclesiastical and political coercion and execution. Jesus was free. Free to be who he was called to be. Free to fulfill his destiny. And the life that Jesus lived was rare, bold, full, alive, electric, contagiously attractive, and free. And we call Jesus Messiah, Savior, Lord. Jesus was born to set his people free. And for you and me to be set free means we are free to be grasped by purpose. To be truly alive is to have a vision, to dream, and to do the will of God. And what God knows for you is what you deep down in your heart really want. They're synonymous. For you were created for a purpose, for a reason. And you have embedded within you the call of God. To be set free then means to be able to do what you were put here on this earth to do. Free from restraints. Free from what other people think. Free from the power of ridicule and criticism. Free from weakness. Free from temptations to, to cheapen yourself and compromise your principles. Free from long-range consequences of bad decisions. You do have second chances. Third and fourth and fifth. Free from limitations imposed upon you by family or, or from those tapes that play in your head. You know, that say, well, don't embarrass us. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. You're weak. You're insignificant. You're just one person. To be set free means to be free from the power of those tapes that play in your head and hold you down and keep you back. To be set free means to be free of the driving need for affirmation and approval. When Jesus was affirmed, it was fickle. They shouted affirmation when he rode into Jerusalem. And a few days later, they shouted, crucify him. Fickle. Jesus was not even affirmed and encouraged by his mother. His mother tried to get him to go home because of what the neighbors were saying about him. To be set free means to find your affirmation, not from the world, but to find your affirmation deep within you. Your affirmation from God, which gives you a sense of peace and deep joy. All the joy to do what you were created to do. All the joy of being what you were created to be. On the other hand, when you don't exercise the freedom to be you, when you ignore and stifle the call of God which is deeply embedded within you, you will never be happy. You will constantly be searching for something to fulfill you, something to give you peace and joy. You will constantly be trying to fill the hole with things, or alcohol, or drugs, or popularity, 
To be set free means to cut through all that stuff and to dig deep within you to discover who you really are and then follow Jesus wherever he leads you. That's what it means to be free. Another free person was John the Baptizer. Do you think he cared what people said about him? Dressed in camel skin with a leather belt around his waist, he was free from the power of advertising. <laughs> free from the leer of gotchocks. <laughs> Do you think he cared about fashion? Of course, I noticed he really liked health food. Did you get that? He locusts and wild honey. John was free to be the prophet. God created him and called him to be. Did you hear a sermon? He called the religious leaders, you brood of vipers. John did not win popularity contests. John was not voted the best preacher of the year. No one told John they enjoyed his sermons. <laughs> no one was wild about his preaching. John didn't meet any of the criteria of modern job descriptions designed by staff, parish, relations committees, and the book of discipline. But John did not care. John, the baptizer, was free. Of course, King Herod finally did him in. He was executed, beheaded, which is often the price of freedom. But John, the baptizer, was free. To be a disciple of Jesus is to be set free. To be set free to be our truest and deepest self. To be set free is to receive the power to expand our lives and, and break the limits that are imposed upon us by our family or more often by our own selves, by ourselves. Jesus sets us free and gives us the power to live, to love, and to give as Jesus did. When the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed.